torture. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Amen. This week I um, had an, uh, a moment where I was encouraged, and it, was, it came in an unusual way I'd like to share with you. Um, over the years, uh, I've, I've been prone to be very... Uh, supportive of people that are homeless and I'll talk to them if I see them in the car, you know, I, I stop and I, I try to help. And I was involved with a place called Journeys in Palatine uh, for, for time, they help homeless people. But uh, this, coming this last Thursday, uh, something unusual happened that uh, hadn't happened before. And, and again, I've helped a lot of homeless people. I was in Chicago for nine months. Uh, near downtown. But I, I helped this individual as I got off 90, um, who was, it was a homeless individual. And then, uh, this is the first time it's, uh, it's happened, but uh, he said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And that, that's from Matthew chapter eight. And I've read that passage many times before, but uh, it really impacted me uh, in a very powerful way at, at, at that time coming from him. And it made me think uh, very readily, more so than I thought before, that our Lord was homeless. He was a homeless individual. And uh, where the encouragement uh, came was uh, later that evening we had an elders meeting, and one of the elders mentioned that uh, when we have our coffee hour, if we uh, have some extra um, food that's available, why not take it over to help some of the homeless people that are in a park nearby? Um, and so um, knowing that our Lord was uh, homeless, shouldn't that affect the way that we look at those people, our, ourselves, in our own lives? And um, but again, the, those words of our Lord himself, as you've done it to the least of these, he said, you've done it unto me. So that word of encouragement for you this, uh, this morning. Some other announcements to share with you. There's uh, Children's Church. It'll be the second time we're going to have that, and it's going to be after the gospel reading. Um, there'll be an object lesson and then dismiss the kids for, uh, for Sunday school. Uh, the upcoming uh, No Cook Nights, uh, that you'd be aware of that. Happy birthday, baby Jesus. There's a sign-up for that, and um, the, please uh, respond by, by the, uh, Wednesday the 29th. Also, the Altar Guild has got activities involved to, to help people that are shut-ins and encourage them that you'd be aware of that. And um, also, there's, there's going to be a Wednesday at 7 o'clock, there's going to be a Thanksgiving Eve service, and over the years, I've had it both ways, where it's, uh, it's, it's been, you know, uh, on Thanksgiving Day, but also Thanksgiving Eve. And personally, I think Eve is even better because... Uh, it, uh, it prepares us uh, without the rush of Thursday and beyond just to, uh, to reflect and prepare our hearts rightly to have that spirit of thanksgiving. So I hope you'll come. And that's again uh, this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And there's a few other announcements. Uh, is Amy Moeller here? Yes. And also Jorge? You wanted to say something you want to come up to? As Pastor mentioned, uh, Children's Church is going to be um, a weekly event every Sunday except for the first Sunday of the month. I had a little hyphen in a communication and people kind of misread that. So it's the second, third, fourth, and if there's a fifth Sunday, it'll also be the fifth Sunday. So it's every Sunday except for the first Sunday. And we're going to have a children's message every Sunday, but on those second, third, fourth, and fifth Sundays, we'll dismiss the children afterwards for Children's Church. 
So I just wanted to clear up my little hyphen. Um, and then the other thing is um, the youth group is selling dips and seasonings, and they are mixes that kind of make very flavorful things. And it's one of our first fundraisers for raising money for um, the National Youth Gathering, which is not this next summer, but the summer of 2025. Um, so there should be this Sunday two youth at the table in the back and two youth at the table by the all-purpose room if you're interested. And they will be here here for Christmas, and they're little, so they make great stocking stuffers. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Amy. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. How's it going? Uh, I have a quick announcement for all you beautiful people. Uh, I want to invite you guys. I'm with, my father is the pastor at Be Thy Fair Lutheran Church uh, in, Fort, in West Dundee. So, today we're having a Thanksgiving service. So at 1 p.m., we're having a regular worship service, obviously specified for Thanksgiving. And then we're having a potluck immediately after. So you are all invited. If you have any questions, you're welcome to contact me. I'll be here after service. You can ask me any questions. Uh, if you want to know the address and anything, again, it's 417 West Main Street in West Dundee, Illinois. So you're all uh, invited. Thank you very much. God bless. Good morning. And let's get on with it. <laughs> Thank you, Jorge. Thank you. <laughs> are there any other announcements? Well, if not, uh, we sing the first hymn. Would you please rise as you're able for the invocation? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty and ever-living God, 
You have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The scripture readings. The Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah, the first chapter. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traders are no more. All who weigh out silver are cut off. At the time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Now, concerning the times and seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Two. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward and saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed, and gather where I have scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please be seated? And would the children come forward for the object lesson at this time? Thank you. 
I think. Can you hear me? Okay. We turned on the microphone so people can hear what we're talking about. I see that. You've got a special book there. We are going to talk about giving thanks because Thanksgiving is coming up, right? And we're going to talk about how do we show that we're thankful? How do we show that we're thankful? Do we say thank you? Do we say yes, please? Yes. And let's think about Thanksgiving when we eat our Thanksgiving dinner. Whose favorite part is the turkey? Oh, yeah. How about the stuffing or the dressing? My favorite. Mashed potatoes? Yeah. All right. How about the broccoli? <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. Yeah. You too? Very good. Very good. Now, I came up with an idea to show how we can be thankful. And I, afterwards, I realized this could be taken two different ways. We're all thankful for toilet paper. But I wrote on here some blessings that I'm thankful for. And I, if we unrolled this, I bet you it would go all the way down the aisle, probably out the doors, across the street, and maybe all the way down to the river, because that's how blessed we are. So I have Jesus. Are we thankful for Jesus? Yeah. You betcha. I put down Mr. Bowler. I better be thankful for him because he puts up with all my wild and crazy ideas. <laughs> I put down my boys. I have two boys. They're big boys now. And I have brothers. How many of you have brothers or sisters? I have the baby. Yes, you got the baby. I, I got a I got a pretend one. You have a pretend one. That's just as good. I've got three brothers. I grew up with three brothers. I'm thankful for my high school kiddos that come every Sunday. I'm thankful for my friends and for St. John's. I'm thankful for all of you that you came back today and we're going to Children's Church. I'm thankful for chocolate. Oop, my thing is very You don't like chocolate? I like me. You? I like chocolate. It's the best. I like Hallmark movies. I'm thankful for Hallmark movies. I'm thankful for books and music. And yesterday I was particularly thankful for apple cider donuts. Do you guys like apple cider donuts? Yes. Yeah. Well, I brought out a picture. Guess what our treat is today? It's, an apple. it's a donut. But could you imagine having a donut this big? Holy smokes, that chocolate. I picked a chocolate one just for you. All righty. But you know what sometimes happens? Even when we are thankful for all kinds of stuff, sometimes we start to look at not what we have in the donut, but we start to look at the hole in the donut, what we don't have. <laughs> so thankfulness really kind of comes down to knowing, just accepting that God knows exactly what's good for us and what we should have, that's the donut part, and what we're not supposed to have yet, and that's the whole. So we have to be content, right, with what God has given us. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to share our special thankful song. Do you remember it from last year? Okay, but let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, you can repeat after me. Thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for all the blessings you've given us in our lives. Given us in our lives. Thank you also, thank you also, for not giving us things we don't need, for not giving us things we don't need, or things that we aren't ready for yet, or things that we're not ready for yet. You know what's best for us. You know what's best for us. Help us be content. Help us be content. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for taking care of us. Amen. And we would like to invite the congregation to sing along with us. We changed if you're happy and you know it to if you're, if you're thankful and you know it. So you guys are going to stand up here. I'm going to move my chair down here, and I'm going to bring up my guitar. You guys face the congregation. All right. And George and Hayden, you want to come on up and help? <laughs> all right. Are we all set? Ready? Okay. Ready? 
Oh, yeah. Okay. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands. If you're thankful and you know it, then your life is worth showing. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands. Thankful and you know it's not your feet. Thankful and you know it's not your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, then you're worth showing. If you're thankful and you know it, stop your feet. Thankful and you know it. We sing the next hymn.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless this time of meditation, that the uh, that you would work through me, again, that I would get out of the way, and that uh, by your Spirit you would speak to the hearts of your people, and that uh, they would take to heart some of the things that are, are, uh, are shared regarding their lives, regarding this world, and uh, the call that, that you have for each one of us to be your servants and to be watching and awaiting the time of your return and to have a, a sense of understanding and even a sense of urgency regarding the work of the kingdom that we would be about it in, in our lives. Hear and bless us our time of meditation. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is with you. Yes. Amen. The text today from Thessalonians uh, is one that, um, with a subject that we don't think about very much in the church uh, at all. I've heard very little said in, in, in our churches concerning the issue of some of the scenarios regarding the return of the Lord, our Lord on the last day in judgment. And with that in mind, I'm curious, uh, have any of you come to the point at certain points in your life where you've thought that uh, uh, it's getting close to the end of the world, where you felt it's, we're getting close to the end of the world? Any of you ever had some of those sentiments? Yeah, a, a goodly number of you have, have thought about that. It happened to me first in, um, back in 1967. I was a sophomore at Northern Illinois University. I just got involved with a group called Campus Crusade for Christ, and they had a, a speaker that, uh, that came in and was nationally known. He had a book. Hal Lindsey was named The Late Great Planet Earth, which was very popular uh, back then. But he uh, spoke in, uh, based on Ezekiel uh, chapter uh, 38 and 39, talking about Gog and Magog, about uh, those evil powers, and Meshach and Tubal, and he identified them as Moscow and Tobolsk and Russia, and Russia, well, again, back then as now, was a, a real um, evil um, nation, empire. He also talked about uh, this gathering that was going to take place at the end. It was called a place called Armageddon. Maybe you've heard that name. That's uh, uh, it's the Mount of Megiddo in Israel. And the one that would be heading this all of this up would be the one who's called the Antichrist. And those who were his followers would have the mark on them, 666. Do some of you remember hearing some of this over the years? I would think that probably that, uh, that some of you have. And reflecting on this, uh, at my young age, uh, I was thinking that uh, the world was going to end within 25 years. I mean, I was really believing that. And I was hoping that uh, I would get raptured out before the bombs would, would be dropping. Uh, but when that didn't happen, uh, then I... Uh, you know, I would think about it every once in a while, and being in religious circles, you'd hear about premillennialism and amillennialism and postmillennialism. And there's a, a lot of theories and understandings regarding all that when it comes to the scenarios at the end. But I really didn't spend a lot of time studying that. But there was one passage of uh, scripture that uh, I guess spoke to my heart concerning all of that. From Matthew chapter 24. And that's where our, our Lord said, this gospel will be preached to the, all the world, a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. And that uh, word, a testimony uh, to all the nations, uh, the word in the, in the Hebrew is, or excuse me, in the Greek is ethne, or ethnic groups, or language groups. And so uh, years ago, uh, I remember hearing first, uh, that there were over 5,000 uh, languages were not been translated into the, into the Bible. Uh, they didn't have a Bible in their language. And then um, later on, in, in other years, I remember hearing 3,000. But now, uh, just as late, I've, I've heard uh, it's 1,300. 
And I'm sure you've heard of AI, artificial intelligence. And um, there's, uh, there, I mean, this is uh, powerful stuff, and especially if it would get into the hands of the wrong people, it could be destructive. But there are people who, that are doing Bible translation who are saying that this could be really good, that it would speed up this process when it comes to the hastening of the coming of our Lord. And uh, hearing all of this, I would say for, for some of you, it kind of makes your head spin a little bit, thinking about uh, such things. And it can, uh, seems like it's kind of radical, um, conspiracy kind of issues surrounding all of this. But isn't it the case that when it comes to the world that we've been living in as of late, that things are moving so quickly in our world with uh, great ramifications that are taking place and the world's increasingly becoming smaller. And so you hear what's going on instantaneously, instantaneously in other parts of the world. Sometimes you know more about what's going on in other places of the world in, in your own neighborhood. And there's really uh, pluses and minuses when it comes to this interconnectedness that, that's uh, arising. And uh, increasingly, you hear more stories about globalism. Maybe you've heard that term. Uh, also, um, um, there's talk about a, a single uh, currency, uh, uh, world currency, um, that that would take place, and also that there would be a one world government. And, and there's, there's been um, meetings in Davos, Switzerland, concerning that for, for many years. So, I mean, a lot of that talk, and, and also, isn't it amazing, uh, at least to you, at least it is to me, how increasingly we are moving, be, becoming more of a, a cashless society? I mean, I'm just amazed at how, that's, how quickly that's, that's taking place. And, and perhaps you've heard, like in, in Sweden, that there's over 6,000 people that have had a chip that's implanted in their hand. And so when they want to buy something, all they do is just to wave their hand and you know, they're able to purchase. And in China, uh, they have retinal scanning. So, I mean, they have you know, people, they can, they can look at the, you know, uh, the processor and scan the retina and be able to purchase things. Wow. But uh, what happens if uh, they don't like the way you think and they uh, turn off your chip? And uh, added to that, um, when it comes to the whole issue of the, the one world government, and some people are saying that that's really a good thing, but uh, who's going to be running it? Uh, and what's their agenda going to be? So um, again, of a lot of this talk, and frankly, it does relate to the scriptures and the rising of the one who is called the Antichrist. And that's all I'm going to share with you concerning all of this kind of thing. I'm sure some of you have heard bits and pieces of it. But I would, I would urge you um, not just to uh, discount this and uh, not to throw out the baby with the bathwater. And then some of the stuff, stuff is scary, but uh, it, uh, it's not written in the scriptures to scare us, but to prepare us so that we would not be blindsided as far as for what's taking place in this world, that we, the people of God, would have this knowledge and understanding of some of the perspectives of what's going on, and that we should share it with our loved ones, with our family members, with the coming generations, so that they would know about, uh, have these, some of these understandings also. And uh, how important it is uh, just thinking about this for us to take Bible studies, uh, you know, get into a Bible study to, uh, to have a, a better understanding of, of the end times that we would have uh, better perspectives on this. And again, some people would just say, well, this is conspiracy, but frankly, there is a conspiracy that's going on. 
I mean, Martin Luther talks about it, the old evil foe that means deadly woe, and that, yeah, there is a conspiracy that's taking place, and that we as God's people would be prepared for this, and that we would understand it, we would have some of these uh, perspectives uh, regarding all of these things that are, that are taking place. Um, again, so that we would not be blindsided. So, um, you know, I share all of these things with you, and, uh, and I don't have the answers. I don't think anybody has all the answers as far as for, it's laid out to where exactly what's going to take place. But there are people who do a lot of study when it comes to this. And they're able more, you know, it seems like everything's kind of disjointed that's going on, but there are those people who do their studies and really work at this, and um, there are people who uh, can connect the dots when it comes to all these things that are taking place, just that we would have this perspective as God's people regarding what's taking place. And uh, how pertinent it is, um, this, today's lesson, uh, this passage from Thessalonians where we hear about the about the, the coming of the Lord. But we hear that it's, uh, he's going to come uh, swiftly. He's going to come uh, to the point that the people are going to be surprised. It's going to be as in the time of the days of, uh, of Noah where people were eating and drinking and they were getting married and then they came to flood and they didn't know what hit them. So, um, again, um, these things are for us to know and that we would uh, consider them for our lives, but also for our church and for our loved ones. And to, get, and to keep this perspective of, of this whole issue of the coming of the Lord. And it might be much sooner than we think. And concerning everything that I, I've, I've just shared with you now, what should be the takeaways? And frankly, when, when it comes to this world, there's not a lot of preparedness for the, for the coming of Christ. Uh, we're a secular society. Uh, increasingly, there's not a belief that there's a God or there's, there's an afterlife. So uh, there isn't that sense of preparedness. But St. Paul in our lesson speaks about that, that we are called to be prepared and that we are to be soldiers of Christ and that we are supposed to be people of the light and that through our baptisms, through our devotion, through our study, through our meditation, through our prayer, through our fellowship, that we are to grow in God's grace, that we are to uh, die to the old nature, as it says in, uh, in the catechism, the drowning of our old nature, anger, greed, pride, lust, unforgiveness, thanklessness, that we would die to this, and instead that through this our time of devotion and study, that we would grow in the fruits of the Spirit and love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness, so that we again would shine as lights in this world. And uh, I think most of you... Uh, uh, are, have the same sense that I do that there's um, there's big trouble ahead when it comes to this world. You just sense it. But sharing all these things, St. Paul also wants us to have one major focus and that we would not forget it. And that's Maranatha, that the Lord is coming. That there's going to be the resurrection, that the Lord is going to set things straight. But in the meantime, that uh, St. Paul says this in our lesson, encourage each other and build each other up, he says, that we are to do that. And how important that is. And I don't know if we take that much time to gather and just to be able to talk about things, about how blessed we are, that our, uh, that our sins are forgiven, that, uh, that we, God is able to deliver us out of our, our difficulties. Um, he's a, a God who crowns us with love and compassion. To know that we have this life within us, not biological life, but the Zoe, that we have this eternal life that's within us that one day will swallow up the old life and that we will have this eternal life 
with a new body, that we are to encourage each other with this in all of these things. And maybe more than encouragement should be when it comes to our relations with other people, uh, is to just share overall, you're gonna get through this. The people need to hear that. You're going to get through this by the grace of God. So encouragement, uh, how important that is. Um, I know that I need it, and I'm sure that also you can, you can uh, need some encouragement when you get down at times. And I'm reminded of um, Simon, son of Jonah, that Jesus saw him and recognized that he was a man of conviction, so he gave him a, a different name, uh, Petros or Rocky that, um, that uh, Peter would grow into this, that he would be a man, of, a strong man of, uh, of Christ and the conviction as far as for a foundation of the church. But again, how important is encouragement? And, and Jesus did that with Peter, and there were some dividends that came through all of that. And there's a man by the name of uh, Dr. John Gottman who's done for decades studies of marriages. And he's come up with, with what he calls the uh, uh, five to one principle when it comes positive to negative. And, and uh, in other words, uh, in a marriage, if there's one thing that's negative that's said, there needs to be five positive things said or done in the relationship. Because otherwise, if that does not happen, if there's not that ratio that, you know, people just more and more gripe at each other and it's destructive for them and for their children. So um, that, you know, encouraging one another. And, I don't think we do that enough, and not being conscientious uh, enough to, to do it in our lives. And I was just, uh, I was at the um, fitness center uh, in Des Plaines just yesterday, and there was a, a guy, and I work, in, work out in two different areas, and there was a young fellow, high school age, and it was really working hard at it. So, you know, I just took the time and I said, you've really got a good work ethic. And so I just tried to encourage them, and do high school kids need encouragement? Yeah, they do. So, um, yeah, that we would more encourage each other. And in your life, has there ever been a person who has gone out of their way to encourage you? Can you remember anybody that, that did that to encourage you? Um, when I was on my vicarage, there was a lady after every one of my sermons, she would say, good sermon, and they were terrible sermons. And uh, in fact, my vicarage uh, supervisor said that my uh, sermons were Georgia Tech sermons, or rambling wrecks, is what he meant by that. Uh, but I really needed to hear that. I, you know, so that I would keep going on and I would keep trying and try to get better when it came to, to, uh, to the task that was set before me. So encouragement and finding ways to lift up each other in, in this world where it's so easy to get down about things. And back in the 1930s, uh, there was a, a, a young instructor at, uh, at a YMCA and he pitched an idea to the supervisor that he'd like to have a class. And so after a couple of years, the class was going so well that there was a publisher that was part of the, of the study, and he said, you need to write a book. And the man's name was Dale Carnegie, and the, the, the book was How to Win Friends and Influence People, and it was a bestseller for, for a decade. But what was the major um, focus of that book? You know, encourage each other. That's what it was. So this morning, I've, I've, I shared with you um, concerning the end times and the difficult days ahead. And, and so, again, how important it is for us as we see things going on uh, to en encourage each other. And uh, to um, encourage each other when it comes, even when it comes to the bad actors that are in this world, that nonetheless to pray for them and they are made in the image of God and to, to pray for them but to build each other up, to, that we are made in the image of God, that he has a plan for us, that he loves us, that he's with us, and he's gonna see us through, that our sins are forgiven, there's no condemnation. Sometimes we need to hear that over and over again because sometimes we could just get stuck over some of our regrets. But to share this with each other, 
that Maranatha, the Lord is coming, full of grace and truth. His grace is sufficient. We live with that, uh, and nothing can separate us from his love. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, keep your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, would you please rise for the creed? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father from all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, enter not into judgment with your servants, for no one living is righteous before you, have mercy on those haunted by guilt and shame, and faithfully convince them of your grace and holiness for them in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us to do your will, for you are our God. Strengthen pastors and meditate on all you have done and proclaim your word in its truth and purity, that your good spirit may lead us on level ground, holy and righteous before you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please bless the continued work of the call committee. Grant them insight and wisdom as they continue in their work. We also pray that through your grace, you will bless the man you have chosen to be our future pastor. Guide and direct him as he serves you, the Lord of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, a nation that despises you will be as a sacrifice to others, for it has rejected you as its strength and shield. Grant repentance in our land, that our laws may be just, our transactions honest, and our love for the others fervent. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, your son died for us so that whether awake or asleep, we might live with him. Receive our thanks for your kindness to all who have died in the faith. Comfort the family of Ron Schlick, the father of Emily Whalen, who mourned the death of her father with the consolation that all who die in Christ live with him forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, in our special petitions, we remember Paul Ehorn, who will have surgery tomorrow. May you allow him to know of, of healing in his coming days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray concerning the Middle East conflict that you would grant wisdom to those who are the leaders who are making decisions that there would be, uh, by your grace, uh, um, moving forward in the right direction concerning the, all the problems and that there would be an increased release of the hostages. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, uh, may you, uh, in your mercy, 
cause us to have a greater understanding and to believe um, the words of Scripture to be true. Help us to be uh, to study, to show ourselves approved, and to be wise unto our salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of grace, preserve us from the temptation to consider you a hard and unmerciful master. Keep us mindful that you give us every good thing in abundance. Most of all, a place in your household for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, would you take the opportunity to greet each other, please? Please rise. We continue now with the order of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him praise and praise. 
it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you have bestowed upon us, for sending your only begotten Son into our flesh and laying upon him our sin because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns in all eternity, all who believe in him will have everlasting life. And therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin, to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. And gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, to renew, to strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body, to drink his blood, as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us with the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.